Welcome to your first flight lesson. In this lesson, we will cover all the basics of helicopter flight. First, I will teach you about the controls. There are four control inputs to a helicopter. Throttle controls the engine RPM as well as the rotor RPM. Since the longbow has automatic throttle control, you don't need to be concerned about throttle. The collective control determines the pitch of all the rotor blades. The more collective you give, the greater the angle of attack of the blades and the more lift is generated. This lift is measured in torque required to turn the blades and is displayed on the eye hats. The simple way to think about collective is that collective controls lift. To increase collective, Use the plus key. To decrease collective, use the minus key. The rudder controls the anti-torque rotor at the back of the aircraft. Using these controls, you can rotate the aircraft about the yaw axis. To yaw the aircraft left, use the left bracket key. To yaw right, use the right bracket key. You can use the yaw control at any speed, but at high speeds you have a chance of losing control of your aircraft, so be careful. The cyclic control controls the tilt of the rotor system in relation to your aircraft. It does this by cyclically changing the pitch of the rotor blades when they reach a certain point in their rotation. When the rotor is tilted, some of the lift generated by the blades is translated to motion in the direction of the tilt. Use of this lift to move the aircraft means that there is less lift to hold a hover, and the pilot must increase torque to compensate. When the cyclic is centered, the rotor disc centers and the aircraft will coast to a hover. The pilot must compensate this with a decrease in torque to remain at the same altitude. The cyclic is used to cause the aircraft to travel in a certain direction. 
The more you give input in a given direction, the faster you go in that direction. When flying the aircraft, all control inputs must constantly be monitored and adjusted. Unlike a fixed-wing airplane, a helicopter is inherently unstable, and only the constant attention of the pilot keeps it aloft. Now we will fly the aircraft. The first thing to do is take off. Let's turn on your engine. To start the engine, press the R key. Increase your torque until the aircraft begins climbing. Climbing torque for takeoff is 90%. To increase torque, use the plus key. Do this until you start climbing. Now continue climbing to 500 feet above ground and hover there. Check the radar altimeter on the IHADs. To hover, decrease your collective to hover torque, about 75%. If you need to use the auto hover stabilization system, hit the H key. You are now hovering. Notice how the vertical speed indicator changed. Now we will use the collective to change altitude. Drop the aircraft to 250 feet. Use 70% torque to slowly lose altitude. Drop the aircraft to 250 feet. Good. Now climb back to 500 feet. Now you know how to use the collective. On to the rudder pedals. We will use the rudder controls to change your heading. Watch the compass across the eye halves. Rotate the aircraft right on its axis to face 70 degrees using the right bracket key. That's got it. Now, while you're still stationary, try using the cyclic to move your aircraft sideways. Push the joystick straight out to the right to slide the aircraft to the right. Push the joystick straight out to the right to slide the aircraft to the right. That's got it. To stop moving, simply center your cyclic control. Now let's move the aircraft to the left. Move your joystick to the left to slide to the left. That's got it. Move the helicopter forward. You need to pitch forward so that the lift of the rotors pulls you along your flight path. Push forward on the cyclic to fly forward. 
add collective to compensate. The more you push forward, the faster you will go. Watch your airspeed indicator and push the cyclic forward until you reach 80 knots. Good. When you're moving forward, you no longer side slip like you used to. The left and right inputs on the cyclic act more like roll control. Try slipping from side to side. See how you bank and turn now. That's how you'll make most of your turns. Ahead of you are a series of gradient bars like a tunnel. I need you to fly inside this tunnel. Keep your airspeed between 30 and 90 knots. Try to look far ahead to anticipate changes in altitude and turns. It will take input from all your controls to fly through the tunnels. Stay inside the gradient bars. Remember that the cyclic also controls airspeed. Let off on the cyclic to slow down. Now that you've had a nice little tour of the training area, we'll head back to base. I have the aircraft.
Landing a helicopter is easy when compared to fixed-wing aircraft. Simply find the place you want to land, establish a hover over the landing site, and use the collective to gently lower the aircraft to the ground. Now you will land the aircraft in front of the hangars. Okay. You now have control of the aircraft. First, move towards the hangars. Now, kill your forward speed and come to a stationary hover above the tarmac. Okay, now slowly decrease your torque to right below hover torque and gently put your aircraft on the ground. You want to try to hit the ground at about 60 feet per minute or below. Watch the VSI indicator on your eye heads. Good landing. Remember the first rule of flying. Always make your number of landings equal your number of takeoffs. <laughs>